Prince Harry and Prince William may be siblings and grew up in the same household, but their differences are hard to ignore. Now with their own households and wives, these couples live life differently. From their choice of homes to keeping traditions, these two royal couples don't dance to the beat of the same drum. I will always love him, but there's a lot of hurt that's happened. Number 1. Windsor to California Sometimes the royals want a change in scenery. Some move to the countryside, others move to California. When Prince Harry and Meghan Markle decided it was in their family's best interest to move to California, it was surprising, to say the least. But Prince William and Princess Kate also decided it was their turn to move out of their Kensington apartment, which is nothing like an average apartment, and more like a palace. The royal couple isn't following in Prince Harry and Meghan's direction of setting off for a new continent, they're just moving from London to the countryside of Windsor. That's as far as this future king can move. But the reason behind both moves is the same, wanting a more normal, down-to-earth life for their kids. But Harry and Meghan just felt they could achieve that stateside, while Prince William and Kate have to stay kingdomside. Number 2. What's up with PDA? It's a commonly known yet unspoken rule that royals and PDA shouldn't be seen together, and it's important to maintain a more conservative face in public. Well, it didn't take long for fans to notice the difference between Prince and Princess of Wales and the Duke and Duchess of Sussex while they greeted fans paying their respects to the Queen at Windsor Castle. Prince Harry could barely keep his hands off Meghan and made sure to open her car door for her. Throughout their relationship, this couple has not been afraid to show their displays of affection publicly. Clearly, their love languages are physical touch. Prince William and Princess Kate, on the other hand, keep things very diplomatic in public and are rarely seen holding hands. Number 3. How It Started Every love story has a beginning, and the story for these royal couples couldn't be any more different. Prince William and Kate met at uni and hung out, even living together as friends before they started their relationship in 2003-2004. About seven years later, they got engaged. They were the only publicly documented relationship these two have been in, though they did break up for a few months in 2007, and Kate dated a friend. They got back together for their fairy tale ending. Prince Harry and Meghan, on the other hand, were set up on a blind date by a mutual friend in 2016. Meghan at the time had been divorced for three years, and Harry was basically living life as a confirmed bachelor. One year and a half later, they were announcing their engagement. Number 4. Royal Titles Things have always been different for Prince Harry and Prince William when it comes to their royal duties, because of the order in line for the throne. Since Prince William has always been the next in line, even so clearly now that Charles is king. William and Kate are prince and princess because William is next in line for the throne. Harry is a prince because his dad is king, but Meghan is a princess by marriage. Just not in the same way as William and Kate, who are the prince and princess of Wales. And since Harry and Meghan have stepped back from working as a royal, they no longer use their royal titles in professional settings. Number 5. Royal Weddings the difference between these royal weddings comes down to one major factor. Things are different when you're the heir to the throne. William and Kate's wedding was a formal event, witnessed by millions of spectators around the world. Harry and Meghan's first wedding was a secret ceremony, with Meghan, Harry, and the Archbishop of Canterbury in their backyard at Frogmore Cottage. And they even have the vows from that ceremony framed on their wall. Their second wedding was not as traditional as Will and Kate's. Meghan walked halfway down the aisle herself, and gospel singers performed Stand By Me, while Kate kept things a little more traditional and walked down with her dad. Number 6. Real Estate You'd think the oldest would have the biggest home as his main residence, but that's not the case for Prince William and Prince Harry. Though William and Kate lived in a literal palace at Kensington that reportedly had 20 rooms, including three main bedrooms with ensuite bathrooms, five reception rooms to host world leaders and his and her dressing rooms. Harry and Meghan's digs in California has a whopping 27 rooms, including five bedrooms and 19 bathrooms, a library, a home cinema, gym, and a lot of backyard space for the chicken coop, playground, and pool. Their Frogmore Cottage also has nine bedrooms, a swimming pool, and a guest house, while William and Kate's countryside home, Adelaide Cottage, is set to be a little smaller than Frogmore. Number 7 birth announcement. Like many things in Harry and Meghan's relationship, their birth announcement didn't follow the same traditions Prince William and Kate did for all three of their announcements. 
There's the announcement that Mom has gone into labor, that Megan chose to keep a secret until after Archie's birth. Then the announcement on an easel at Buckingham Palace that Kate did, but Megan chose to go with a more modern Instagram post. And finally, the postpartum photo on the hospital steps. Kate has been photographed three times, while Megan chose to wait two days after giving birth to present Archie to the world, in a controlled environment due to safety concerns surrounding press coverage. Number 8. Royal Date Nights you really only see royals on a date night when they're on official royal duty, like Kate and William attending the BAFTAs or movie premieres. You probably won't see them casually grabbing dinner or heading to the movies for a date night. Prince Harry and Meghan, however, can let their hair down and enjoy each other's company without the kids or the royal expectations and protocols. Number 9. Royals and Podcasts the royals have been trying to up their public appearance game over the last few years, giving us more relaxed versions of the monarchy. But Harry and Meghan definitely took that to a whole new level by signing a multi-year partnership with Spotify and their company, Archwell Audio. Meghan's Archetypes podcast has already launched, while Prince Harry's is set to launch after he releases his memoir. Yup, Prince Harry is ready to share his story. Prince William and Kate haven't quite gotten to that level. They've done their own podcast interviews and appearances on radio shows, and even launched their own YouTube channel, but it's still conservative compared to Harry and Meghan's openness. Number 10. Princely Parenting Harry and William have chosen to parent in different ways. One has their nannies royally trained and in uniform, while the other chooses a more laid-back approach. Prince Harry has been known to dislike the royal nanny protocol or wearing uniforms, and much preferred his nanny in regular clothes, in an effort to raise Archie as down-to-earth as possible. But for William, things are a little different when he's raising his successor, Prince George. He gets the nannies in full uniform, so Prince George is trained and prepared for his future royal duties in a way Archie probably won't need to be. Number 11. Uniform Changes there was a little drama over Harry's outfit for his grandmother's vigil compared to the outfit he wore during the procession. As he's no longer a working royal, he wore mourning clothes while the rest of his family wore their military uniform. But for the vigil, with the permission of his dad, King Charles, he was in uniform, looking a little different from William's, who had a blue sash and the late monarch's initials on his hat and epaulets. Just another reminder that things have changed for this royal. Number 12. Social Media Accounts while most working royals have official social media accounts run by the palace, Meghan and Harry decided to stop updating their Sussex royal accounts. Although they say this isn't a forever goodbye to social media, just for now. The Prince and Princess of Wales are so up to date on their social media, they changed their bios and handles to Prince and Princess of Wales once King Charles announced their promotions. Number 13. Privacy versus Protocol there are certain royal protocols that Meghan and Harry choose to ignore or override in an effort to control how much privacy they have in their personal life. One was their kids. Every time Meghan was pregnant, nobody knew the actual due date or birth date until Meghan and Harry announced it. Their daughter Lilibet was the most private, with Meghan only sharing the season she was expected to make her debut. Prince William and Princess Kate don't have the same luxury of keeping things private, as they followed protocol to the letter announcing their doctor's name, which Meghan and Harry also chose to keep private, and sharing regular pictures of the kids as they grow up. Number 14. New Holiday Traditions It's tradition that the royal family spend Christmas together at Sadringham. But Meghan and Harry have broken tradition there more than once. The first was when Meghan spent her first Christmas there without being married to Harry. Usually, there's no invitation to Christmas if you haven't walked down the aisle. Then, Archie's first Christmas was spent with Meghan's mother, Doria, in Canada. And for their annual Christmas card announcements, one year Meghan and Harry opted for a creative illustration of a family photo. Meanwhile, the Prince and Princess of Wales always share their standard forward-facing family photos, showcasing their growing family. Number 15. Family Vacations Any family vacation Prince William and Kate have been on required permission from the Queen, fit within the royal budget, and since Prince George is heir to the throne once he turns 12, he won't be allowed to travel with his father, according to royal law. They also fly commercial, not just private, but when they do, it has to be British to support local airlines. But for Prince Harry and Meghan, they can take however many family vacations their schedules can handle, and don't have to worry about keeping to a royal budget now that they manage their own finances, or flying specific airlines. Plus, there's no age limit or restriction on them flying together. 
Do you think these differences were bound to come up or the circumstances they're under brought them out? Let us know what you think in the comments and be sure to like, share, and subscribe to The Think Celebrity for more on your favorite royals.